If you've been looking to get your first resin 3D printer or have even been around resin 3D printing for a short time, there's a really good chance you're familiar or have at least heard of the company called Elegoo. A couple of years ago, they released the Elegoo Mars, which gained immense popularity for its low price point and its high quality prints that it was able to produce. Fast forward and they have released a couple of different versions of this Mars and even the bigger brother, which you can see the corner of here, the Elegoo Saturn, which is a even larger 4K monochromatic LCD resin printer. Now, what you might not know is that Elegoo actually released a FDM or extrusion based 3D printer back in 2019 called the Neptune. And I only recently discovered it when Elegoo reached out asking if I wanted to test out their new Neptune 2 3D printer. Being that it was the Neptune 2, I figured there must be a Neptune 1, which led me to doing some Googling and pulling up on YouTube a couple of videos on this Neptune 2 from back in 2019. Now, something really interesting about the new Neptune 2 is the price point of this printer. Now, they had it listed on Amazon at $160, which is incredibly inexpensive. And I thought maybe this was an early bird pricing. So I reached out to Elegoo before making this video to say, hey, what's the actual price gonna be of this printer once there is a steady stock of this and once it's out there in the market? And they said, no, the MSRP or the price we're asking for this printer is $160, which is pretty insane. Now, looking at this printer in terms of its overall form factor and its build volume, as well as its price, it puts it right in that sweet spot of being at the lowest point for an entry level desktop 3D printer and a direct competitor to the Creality Ender 3. Me being a huge fan of Elegoo for the resin printers and the original Mars being one of the best resin printers, or at least most reliable printers that I have used, I was really excited to see what this new extrusion based 3D printer was going to be all about. So today's video is gonna be all about the Neptune 2. We're gonna go over the technical specs, we're gonna go over the setup and like initial calibration, and of course we're gonna do some 3D printing. I hope you guys are excited, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. So like we typically do, let's first run through the specs. The Neptune 2 has a build volume of 220 by 220 by 250 millimeters and is, is comprised primarily of aluminum extrusions. The base that houses the motherboard and LCD screen is made of injection molded plastic. This printer is running on 24 volts and very surprisingly for the price point features a 32 bit mainboard and TMC 2225 drivers for a much quieter operation. The build surface is made of the same sort of knockoff build sack that comes on similar printers and it is adhered to a flexible sheet that is held down by binder clips which will allow you to flex parts off of the bed instead of having to use a spatula. This printer does use manual bed leveling via four large knobs. However, there are two threads or two mounting holes on the hot and carriage I noticed right away, which leads me to believe that these are in place for you to be able to relatively easily install a BL touch or some sort of auto bed leveling probe should you decide you want to do so. The Neptune 2 uses a Bowden type extrusion system with a filament runout sensor sitting right next to the extruder. The specs do say that the hot end could go up to 260 Celsius, but with it not being all metal, I would not recommend going above 250 Celsius to avoid melting the PTFE and potentially damaging the lining inside of the hot end. The Z-axis is driven by a single stepper motor and a single lead screw, and I do really like that the Y-axis bed is riding back and forth on a 40-40 millimeter aluminum extrusion, unlike the stock Creality Ender 3, which is riding back and forth on a 20-40 millimeter extrusion. This wider aluminum extrusion should help to ensure that your bed is nice and uh, rigid and should help to eliminate any potential wobble. With the Neptune 2, you can print over USB directly connected to a Raspberry Pi with OctoPrint or directly connected to your computer, or you can use a micro SD card and interfacing is going to be done through the touchscreen located on the front of the printer. There is power loss recovery built into this machine and it might be a small detail, but I really like the overall look of this machine and the fact that the power supply, which is normally silver, is black to match the rest of the printer and the little Elegoo, I believe it's laser etched on the top of the frame is a nice little touch. That covers most of the specs, so let's quickly pop the bottom panel on this machine and take a look at the electronics. Accessing the main board is done by removing six screws on the underside of the machine that holds the housing together. Beneath the printer, you'll find a 32-bit board that is labeled as a ZNP Robin Nano. The stepper drivers are embedded into the board, and I did try to remove the heatsink to get a closer look, but they were stuck down pretty hard, so I decided to leave it in place. Other than that, you'll find a Robin touchscreen as well as a blower fan that's going to be blowing air across the main board. There is a slit in the aluminum extrusions, which is where all of the wires will feed out into a cable braid and overall everything was secured down nicely. 
The Neptune 2 showed up packaged very nicely, and I would say that setup time roughly is going to be somewhere between 30 minutes to an hour, and that really just depends on how quickly you go, and if you've ever assembled another printer or put together a similar kit, it might go a lot quicker, but I would say 30 minutes to an hour on average is about what you can expect. The instructions did come on a printed out booklet, which is always nice to see. This booklet was very clear and concise. It didn't leave me with any questions. And if for some reason you lose that booklet, it was also included in a PDF format on the included micro SD card. I don't really have any complaints regarding the assembly. And again, it was very straightforward. If I did have one sort of recommendation, I would have liked the screws to have come in their own individual bags. They were all kind of in one bag, which wasn't a huge deal because before I assembled this, I went ahead and separated them all uh, with like screws. And they do have a little kind of checklist that shows you um, how many screws of each size are supposed to be there. So to kind of expedite things and make sure you're using the correct screw, I would say separating the screws out will take you a minute maybe. There's not even that many screws, but again, I like having them in their own individual labeled bags. So if that's something they could implement, I think that would be nice for especially people looking to build this printer as their first machine. The power supply on my printer came set to 220 volts and I am in the US, so I went ahead and flipped the switch to 110. Make sure you check that before turning on the machine. Over here, at least luckily in the US, going from uh, 220 to 110, the worst thing that would happen is either the machine wouldn't power on or things would be severely underpowered. But if you're having it set to 110 and you are using it somewhere with 220, you can definitely break and damage things. So um, always, 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 always make sure on these kind of power supplies that you check that it is set uh, correctly for your location before powering on the machine. Next step was to level the bed and I went ahead and grabbed a little piece of paper and I normally just home the printer, turn it off and then move the head around and level it. But I actually decided to use the built-in uh, bed leveling functionality, which all it really does is it homes the bed and then there are five points on the touch screen that you can click on, which will jog the head to all of the four corners and then the center finally. And so I just took the piece of paper like you normally do back and forth and uh, made sure I had the correct distance between the nozzle and the build surface. Once leveled, I was ready to do some printing. I preheated the machine and I loaded in some of the Orange Matter Hackers build series PLA that I've been using in a lot of recent videos. I have quite a few spools overflowing here and most of them are like halfway gone to even 75% gone. So I'm really trying to finish up some of these spools to free up some space. So uh, there's been a lot of orange lately and that's one of the main reasons why. I went ahead and checked on the micro SD card to see if there were any pre-sliced files and did find that there was one named Buddha. So I went ahead and hit print and this is a pretty small and quick test print. I think it was probably somewhere around the three-ish hour mark if I remember correctly. And I was really pleased with the details and the results. And again, although it was just a small print it at least let me know that hey everything's working correctly and the assembly is good and this machine is ready to do some larger prints. So I headed over to the computer to slice up my own files. I plugged in the micro SD card and on the SD card there was a Elegoo version of Cura which honestly looked just like the latest Cura which I believe at this time is 4.8 um, but it had the Neptune 2 profile built into it. So I installed that and I found a really awesome model of a uh, basically a small milk crate. I'd seen someone printing it on Twitter, I think like a week ago. So um, I had that in my mind. I found it over on Thingiverse and um, one, I thought it would be cool because I like printing things for storage and this tiny little milk crate would be great to throw some cables in or random things that I have around. And two, I figured it would be a really nice retraction stress test because of the mesh on the side of the uh, milk crate, it's a lot of retractions over and over and over again. So I thought it would kind of be two things. One, sort of a functional or useful print and two, a great way to see how well it handles retraction. So uh, I sliced this up in the Elegoo Cura and I printed it out with that orange PLA. This was roughly an eight hour print and I was super pleased with the result. I think that the Neptune 2 did a fantastic job with the retraction, the model's great, and all in all, I would say this was a very successful print. Then I decided I wanted to print out a character model and this video is actually going to be live on February 27th, which just so happens to be Pokemon Day and this year is the 25th anniversary. So I figured that I would print out a awesome Charizard model that I found, uh, I believe also over on Thingiverse. All the links to any models that I describe in this video will be in the description of this video. So if you want to um, print your own version of these or if you want to check out the artist's other work, you can do so by checking there. So I went ahead and downloaded the Charizard and I imported it into the Elegoo Cura. It did require quite a bit of supports underneath the wings, underneath the tail, underneath the chin, the horns, um, the uh, mouth. So there was quite a bit of 
um, supports that needed to be done. I just went ahead and let Cura do its default thing. I didn't mess with the supports. I didn't really want to tweak them. I just wanted to print this out and see how the printer would handle it. So I went ahead and sliced it up. I hit print. This was also an eight hour print and the model itself turned out really nicely. However, there was a ton of stringing and the stringing was primarily between the support structures. So I'm not exactly sure what the main cause of that was, but it was, it was pretty crazy. It definitely looked like a cobweb of filament. So what I thought is that um, on a lot of times these, these style of printers, I usually use the default Creality Ender 3 profile that's built into native Cura. And so I went ahead and loaded up the default Creality Ender 3 profile and did the exact same thing. I tried to keep the settings nearly identical, um, but I left the retraction settings the way that they are set in Cura for the Ender 3 and I hit reprint. And this time it was, it was a huge difference. I took a video um, pan kind of of them side by side showing you with again, basically the exact same settings and just a slight tweak in the retraction based off of the Ender 3 profile, um, how much of a night and day difference it made. So the main issue here was just that the retraction definitely needs some dialing in on the Elegoo uh, profile that came on that micro SD card. So the second version of Charizard turned out great. The only issues I saw was that the support structure on the very bottom corners of the like wing tips um, didn't seem to do the supporting they were supposed to do. So this was not a fault of the machine, but again, I auto-generated the supports. I didn't spend a lot of time tweaking them to make sure that they were perfect. So it just looks like the bottom corners of the wings were not supported. So uh, the tiny little tip on both sides either broke off or was shifted a little bit. And then the other thing is too, I removed the supports on the um, non-stringy model and I had a hell of a time trying to get rid of the supports in Charizard's mouth. So again, not a fault of the machine, just with supports on a character model like this, you definitely wanna take the time and make sure that things are being supported correctly and maybe play around a little bit with your, uh, your air gaps between your support structure and the actual model. For the rest of my testing, I decided to stick with the Creality Ender 3 profile, again, because I had such better results with the retraction and I loaded up some black PLA on a very old spool. I think I've had this spool for two plus years and it is a large spool with just a little bit of black PLA left. So I loaded that up and I decided to print out this planetary gear, which is a super awesome model. Basically it prints in place and all of the gears, if you have, um, if your printer has at least decent tolerances and your bed leveling isn't too close, so it mushes things together. Um, once you pop it off of the build surface, it should be a fully functional gear. And the planetary gear, um, I saw this first probably about a year or two ago as well. And um, this was the first time I'd seen a 3D model that had the kind of print in place, but afterwards it was movable. So the first time I saw it was mind blowing uh, to me. And if you have not printed this model out, it's definitely a very cool model to print out yourself. But uh, again, I sliced this up. I think I printed this at 100 microns. It might have been 200 microns, but I know that the layer height recommendation was pretty fine. Uh, again, just to make sure that you've got the correct uh, gaps between those gears. And when the print's done, that those gears can all spin freely. So. This turned out awesome and the, uh, again, the gear, the planetary gear is a very cool model. I was pleased with the results on this. Next over on my mini factory, I found a really cool model of the FNF tower from Panama City. Uh, I just really liked the look of this model and the fact that it had a very long fine point on the top of it, I thought this will kind of be another fun, interesting print just to see how the printer handles it. I know that on a lot of prints, uh, on a lot of printers, when I've done small points like that, they just kind of droop and sag and look pretty sad. So I, I thought to myself, let's throw this at the machine, see how well it does, see how the cooling does to quickly cool this. So that way it's able to kind of build uh, on top of itself. And I gotta say that I was really impressed with the results of this. I thought that it did uh, a better job than I really had expected. And I don't think any of the machines I have other than of course resin printers could have captured the detail of that top portion of the tower any better than the Neptune 2 did. So that was a definite win in my book. And lastly, I threw some PETG filament on this printer and I printed out a uh, flush wall mount model as well as a, uh, basically a candle holder. It's like kind of a low poly candle holder that I thought was awesome. And both of these turned out great. I do get a lot of people in the comments asking about my profiles. And again, this is just the stock Creality Ender 3 profile baked into Cura for the sake of the um, pet G prints. The only things I changed was I did uh, 200 micron layer heights. I printed at 245 Celsius on the hot end with 60 Celsius on the bed. 
and I bumped the fan speed down from 100% like I was using with PLA down to 50%. Typically with PTG, I still like to have a little bit of um, fan or airflow. I think that it does help with some of the bridging or some of the overhangs, but 100% is overkill for PTG and 50% uh, has kind of been the sweet spot for me when I'm printing with PTG filament. My experience with the Neptune 2 so far has been absolutely incredible. And the fact that this thing is $160 and somehow, some way they were able to squeeze a 32-bit board and silent drivers into it is beyond me. Just a year and a half ago, I, you'd be hard pressed to find a 32-bit board that was south of $100. Most of them were up there close to $100. So the fact that for $160, you're getting the board, the steppers, the printer, and all of the stuff that comes along with it, it's incredible to see just how far the technology has come and what you're able to get for your dollar now. I always try to be as fair as I can with my impressions of 3D printers and um, find things, you know, there's a lot of good always, but typically there's some things that can be improved upon. And, I had a pretty hard time finding them on this machine, especially in my head, knowing that this thing is 160 bucks, it was very hard to critique things. But if there was two things that I think could possibly be improved upon, the only two, two gripes, I guess, if I was really um, harping on the printer would be, when everything is running at full capacity, like PLA with 100% fan speed and the blower fan on the main board is going full speed, um, it can be a bit noisy. With that being said, it's not what I would describe as loud. Like I printed with a lot of FDM printers that are much louder, but it's certainly not quiet. It makes some noise and um, that was something I guess at least worth mentioning. And then the only other thing really is the sort of knockoff build tack bed sheet that I mentioned is something I'm personally not a huge fan of. Now, uh, does this stuff stick? Yes, absolutely. However, in my opinion, it sticks just too well. And even if you've got your nozzle further away than you normally would, I often run into issues with some of the filament, especially since I use skirts on everything, just kind of welding to the bed surface. So it's a small, um, a small upgrade that could be easy to install like a flex plate system. But again, the bed, isn't necessarily one of my favorite features of this printer. Now, is the Neptune 2 the most feature-packed printer on the market? Well, if you've got the budget to spend more money, then absolutely not. But for somebody that's looking to get their first 3D printer that's on a tight budget, or for somebody just looking to add another machine to their lineup that maybe just wants a PLA machine, or if you enclose an ABS machine, or you know whatever, it's, it's an incredible value. And it really, in my opinion, almost changes what the expectations of a sub $200 3D printer can be. The fact that Elegoo confirmed that the $160 price tag is what they're planning on keeping this machine at is going to make this machine incredibly hard to ignore for anybody that is trying to 3D print on a budget. I said that they were with this machine targeting the Creality Ender 3, and I think that they've got a serious dog in the fight with the Neptune 2. I do plan on doing quite a bit more 3D printing with this machine over the following weeks and months here. So like I've done with the Creality Ender 3 and a few other machines, I'm happy to update you guys on how the printer is holding up if that is something you are interested in. Uh, let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. Again, um, Elegoo having been this company that's built quite a reputation for themselves for building just a very, uh, good budget friendly resin 3D printer machine now tapping more heavily it seems at least into the FDM market with this printer. I'm curious to know what your guys' thoughts are on uh, on this, on the machine. Let me know in the comments down below. And if you have any questions about the Neptune 2, maybe something I said or something I didn't say, let me know uh, as well in the comments down below. And if I don't have the answer, uh, Elegoo has always been really great about getting back to me quickly. So I don't have any problems with reaching out to the manufacturer directly to answer some of those questions. On that note, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there is always fresh content coming your way. If you did want to support the channel furthermore, I will place links down below in the description to the Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. And a huge thank you to all of my current Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. I really appreciate all of you guys supporting me and allowing me to spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you guys all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from Modbot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.